Okay, so we're going to be talking about Chapter 3, which is Use and Occupancy Classifications. I mentioned this earlier in the introduction. So here they all are on the first page. You have Assembly, Business, Educational. Each one of them has a, you know, a letter associated with it. And then you have the subgroups of each one that you're going to want to be aware of. For so Assembly, you have five different types. For high ha for hazard, high hazard, you've got you know five different types, institutional and so on and so forth. So make sure that you uh, you're aware of that. Here's all of our assembly, okay, and it kind of breaks it down as to what's an A1 and what's an A2 and so forth and, and, and what have you. So make sure that you can find those. That's A, obviously. We have B, which is uh, business groups. Now this is kind of important. Now, sometimes they'll use language that you have to kind of wade through. And when I'm talking about this, is this is professional, okay, services, attorneys, dentists, and physicians. Well, a lot of times let's say doctor, you know, or a lawyer or something like that. It doesn't actually say that here, but those are your professional services and their business group B. You got banks, you got a car wash. Maybe you might think car wash would be something different, but it says here it's a business. Educational, all the different, you know, uh, groups. You have daycare, you know, and it tells us what a daycare is, you know, so um, so make sure that you, uh, the, you know, that you, uh, you take a look at that. You know, you got a group E, which says through the 12th grade, then you've got daycare. These are, these are, um, these are, um, educational. They are, in, you have factory group F motion pictures here. You'll see is in factory group F here. They all are. All right. So this is all once again, use and occupancy classification and, uh, and what have you. So, so, uh, so. Take a good look at this and kind of kind of wait, kind of take a minute. Now we've got institutional on page, uh, well, it's page 60, but it's section 308. That's more important. You may have a different version, which has a different page number. But institutional group I. So you've got an I1, I2, I3. Okay, like your prisons here. Your prisons is at I3. All right, you have some drug centers and so forth. Those are I1s. Those are all different. You know, all these are different. You just may need to pick them up mercantile and so on and so forth all of chapter three it's all about that you have storage group okay all the storage i think uh, aircraft hangar okay aircraft storage and repair where you're going to store and repair an aircraft okay can be as an aircraft hangar and that's a storage group and then you have um now this is a little bit different under you you also have an aircraft hangar under you okay and this is as an accessory to a one or two family residence so it's a little bit, uh, it, it can be a little bit misleading there. So it's U if it's attached to a residence, it's S um, if it's if it's not. And then you have retaining walls, okay? So this, this might be for maybe a marine contractor, okay? Or, you know, a general building residential. Retaining wall is a U, which is uh, miscellaneous. Okay, so that's chapter three. We talked about chapter four a minute ago uh, in the introduction. Chapter four is all about, it says, special detail requirements based on use and occupancy. So these are some kind of special rules, kind of off the wall stuff. You know, get just some kind of off the wall question about a special occupancy. It might be in chapter four. Okay, so one of these is, is that we like to look at is your state requirements for educational facilities, 453. Boot camps for children, really? 459. All right. Chapter and then and then all these things are in chapter uh, are in are in this chapter. Okay, all these sections right here. Schools, colleges, universities, uh, control of radiation hazards. Well, that's interesting. Adult daycare, okay, nursing homes. So these are all these special requirements for these particular um, occupancies. Now it also talks at the bottom of this list, it mentions chapter 30, elevators and conveying systems. And I mentioned earlier that you do want to make sure that you can find that and structure see where this coastal's construction line in 3109. So we'll we'll take a look, uh, we'll take a look um, at that when we get to it. So we have section 402, cover malls and open areas. And I'm just going to kind of flip through here. I don't have anything in particular highlighted until we get to 453 of underground buildings, 405. Well, that's interesting. Atriums, okay. All right. Motor-related vehicle occupancy. So, as you can see, these are all kind of like exactly what the uh, chapter talks about, special detailed, 
okay requirements. We have stuff in I2. This is this is that institutional group, okay, in I2. So they might ask you, say, you know, this this could be a good question. So they might ask you about an institutional and in I so we'll have to go. We need to know what an I2 is. They might ask you about, so we go to I2. Let's see here. This kind of gives us an idea like of what I was talking about earlier. So an I2 is, shall include buildings and structures used for medical care on a 24-hour basis for more than five persons, okay? So it talks about hospitals. So they might ask you about a hospital, okay? In a hospital, so you know that's an I-2. Well, here they all are. It doesn't actually say hospital here, right? So you got to know that, you know, uh, let's say in a psychiatric treatment area, each area, okay, uh, each area does not exceed 1,500 square feet, okay? Physician, it says areas where in psychiatric care recipients who are not capable of self-preservation or house or group meeting or multiple multi-purpose therapy spaces other than incidental uses under constant supervision by facilities shall be permitted to be open to the corridor where the following conditions are met. Okay, and I know this is getting really in the weeds, but sometimes these are the kind of things that you're asked. They get very detailed and knowing what um, use and occupancy classification there are is very important. Then you have I3, number 408, I3. This, what are these? Remember, these are prisons. All right, I3 are prisons and what have you. So they might say prison and they might say, you know, what's the door width in a sleeping unit? Okay, can't, in a prison, can't be less than 28 inches. Well, if you didn't know that I3 was a prison, you might have a hard time finding it. Fascinating, fascinating stuff. Amusement buildings, 411. Just, just some really crazy stuff. Combustible storage is 413. Yeah. So you get the idea. You know, just some really interesting, uh, interesting type of uh, 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 drying rooms, organic coatings, application. I'm looking at 416, 417, 418, and so forth. Um, you have. Uh, all kind of good all kind of good information there okay so we're gonna hospital there you go 449 so we're gonna go to 450 we talked about 453 ambulatory might ask you about 451 ambulatory surgical surgical center so i'm just kind of giving you an idea here um, a birthing center okay you could get a question now here's the state education requirement for educational facilities this is the one that we've seen come up a lot and they want to know about the certificate of occupancy for new buildings, additions, renovations, remodeling shall not be occupied until the building has received a certificate of occupancy for compliance with codes that were in effect of the date of the date of the permit application. Okay, so sure we should know that that should be self-explanatory, but remember you could get a certificate of completion, which would be different. So just kind of just kind of keep that in mind. Okay, real good. <clears throat> certificate of, I gotta have a CO. You can't have anybody in there, you know, because sometimes you can get a certificate of completion and use the building for its intended purpose without the CO. Well, not in an educational facility, and I think that makes sense. Also have 430, 454. All right, swimming pools. Okay, public and private. All right, you know, you might get a question about a swimming pool. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, just kind of flipping through here. Manufacture buildings, 458. All right, you might have some, uh, uh, the five, what is a manufactured building? What do they say? What do they say? Do they have even a definition for a mag? See, they can be factory built, okay? All right, um, boot camps for children. All right, so there's actually some special rules for boot camps for children. If you get that, mausoleums and columbariums. All right, so keep in mind, once again, we're talking about these special radiation hazards, 465. I think I mentioned that before. All right, here we go. So you know, you realize the kind of questions that you might get are going to come out of chapter four. All right, so we're going to look at general building 
heights and areas next. 